Hello and welcome to the Chart of the Week video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Wednesday the 3rd of October and the time has just gone 12.20 British Summer Time. Uh, and this, chart, this, this week's Chart of the Week is Tesco. Uh, first off the bat, the share price is lower on the day on the back of, broadly speaking, mixed results. Uh, first half operating profit increased by nearly 24%, but it came in uh, well fair, fairly below expectations. Uh, on, a, on, a quarterly, on, a, on a quarterly basis, uh, UK like-for-like -like sales rose by 2.5% 2, 2 in the second quarter, beating uh, expectations of 2.2%. It was also the 11th consecutive quarter of UK like-for-like -like sales rising. Um, costs, um, the costs are continuing to be in cost and the company is well on, on, its, on its way to actually achieving its cost-cutting target. And the dividend was also increased uh, as well. And the company did, 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 did also issue a quite a optimistic statement st stating that, that they are on track to achieve their target. So the investors are clearly focusing on the fact that the, the, the headline first half operating profit came in a fair bit below expectations. But by and large, there's a lot of positives uh, in, the, in, the, in, in terms of fundamentals in this update. Uh, taking a look at the share price action uh, over the kind of big picture, if we draw a trend line between the lows here of 2016 and all the way along here, we can see, with a few exceptions, it did manage to trade below it. But broadly speaking, it's been in a fairly solid upward trend uh, for the past uh, two, two, two and a half years or two years and, uh, and, and nine months. My series of higher highs and higher lows. And in fact, only in August uh, uh, earlier, this only whenever six weeks ago, back in August, stock managed did did, did manage actually to hit uh, a four-year high. So the big picture in terms of the, kind of the big broad strokes uh, is is, pure, is clearly um, pointing to the upside. But if you kind of zoom in and take a closer look at the price action since the August high on, on the 10th of August, we can see that the share price has been drifting lower. Uh, this could be a case of the beginning of a downward trend or could be just a natural correction before the, the wider big picture upward trend uh, resumes. So taking a look here at, at, at the share price since the uh, since, since middle of August, it's a bit worrying that we, we've now began to see what could be the beginning of a downward trend whereby we've seen a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, and yet again another lower low. And in fact, we're not, not back to le we're not back to levels not seen since August. And when the market uh, dro dropped lower today, notice how it actually fell below this red line here, the 200-day moving average. And not too long ago, the 200-day moving average did manage to act as both resistance and support in, in recent, uh, not, not too long ago. So therefore, it is a fairly significant metric. It's also worth pointing out that uh, a gap to the downside is quite bearish. Uh, it's also a myth in technical analysis that gaps are always filled. Not always filled, but they are often filled. So which leads me to believe we could see further um, uh, pressure to the downside in the near term, but we might see the longer term trend uh, kick in and actually we could see the share price push higher down the line. So in terms of near, near term price action, we've fallen down to a level here in around the kind of, we're currently in around the 215 region. If we, if we, we noticed that in the kind of 215, 216 region did manage to act as resistance in the past. It's, so it could potentially act as support in the near term. Even if you do drop below 215, we may find some buyers enter the fold in around the two pound market. It's a big psychological number, but also we can see that on a few occasions, not too long ago, the two pound level or the 200 pence level did manage to act as support. And even if you drip, uh, drift below that, uh, the, the market could head back down towards this trend line in around the kind of 193 region. So while we remain south of the currently moving average, we could see further pain in the share price. So we might see a short term. It could, it could, it's a continuation of the, of the short-term sell-off that we're seeing. But if the share price does manage to actually um, push higher uh, down the line and actually retake the 200-day moving average, we could be looking heading back up towards this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, which comes into play at 250. Notice how the 100-day moving average acted as a support and resistance on a number of occasions not too long ago. So if it is acted as support and resistance not too long ago, it makes it more likely it will act as a as a significant metric in the near term. If you if you take out the if you move back above the 100-day moving average at two pounds fifty, we could be looking at heading back up towards the August high of 266. And if we go beyond that, we then be in fresh multi-year high territories, and we could be looking at targeting up around the 275 or 280 region. Uh, if you have any comments on this video or any other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.